I've begun work on the electrical system for the vehicle. Right now I have a 105 amp hour marine battery that came with the vehicle and that's just been secured down to this board here using these three quarter inch little boards here. That way it won't move while the vehicle is running. Now in the corner here is a little bit of hose that runs to the underside of the vehicle. And then this cable here runs to the front to the battery isolator. There's uh, a 60 amp inline fuse there, which I used because it used to be up in this corner over here, but that, I didn't like that position. It made more sense for me to have it back here. Then of course the negative is just grounded here. I ground away the metal and just grounded it straight to the aluminum frame of the vehicle. Now, from here, it's pretty simple. I have a positive and negative bus here. The negative, everything will come back into it, and then that'll connect back to the battery and ground. And the positive is just a fuse box. Now, I have one set of wires running off of it here. There's no fuse in that yet. That will go up to where my fantastic fan is in the future. The negative bus that I bought turned out not to work. Basically, any of the negatives that came in actually didn't end up connecting back to ground and therefore the whole circuit didn't work. So I've purchased this new one that has 10 pins and it's working quite nicely. Okay, to show that this system actually works, I've just got one of these little circuit testers here and I've clipped it onto the negative ground. Now, if I put it here, it doesn't turn on. But if I put it to this one that has the fuse in it, you'll see that it actually turns on. So we know because that this is connected back to the battery, that this is now working. And then we can ch check the ground by clipping this onto that one there. And then we'll be going in here. And we see that there's actually a circuit back to ground. This battery system is kind of right below the bed. And what I want above the bed are these fairy lights, which are on an LED dimmer. So they're going to give a really great ambiance for the bedroom area. And as you can see, they've hooked up. They get really bright. <laughs> it's, it might not show so well up on the camera, but they definitely dim. So I've run wires up to two LED puck lights. Now I've actually run enough wire to add two more to this, but I only have two matching ones at the moment, so I've ordered two more. And then those lights are hooked up to a switch by the front door and they can be turned on and off. So one of the first things that I put in were these LED puck lights, but I've made some changes. Mostly it has to do with the switch. When I turn these on I realize that this is kind of a nice uh, low light setting to have. I've got a three-way rocker switch here. Right now it is up. If I put it in the middle position, the lights go out, and if I put it in the bottom position, the lights come down. Now, the two lights at the front, that's these lights here, will come on in either the top or the, or the bottom position. Now, if I take this battery tester and I hook it up to these wires, which I've roughed in for adding in the lights, and it, it just have to be kind of careful here, but precise, but you see, I've actually got connection there and this tester is not turned on. Now that is because this light switch here is in the down position. If I flick it all the way up to the top position and I go back here and I run this tester, right here, you should see this turn on when I make contact. Yeah, like that. So then if I were then to put that in the down position again, that would turn off and of course, when this switch here is in the middle position, all four lights will turn off. This light here in the cab came with the old installation, and I've kept the wiring of it so that I can turn on and off the light when I first come in the door. I've also installed this master switch, which comes directly off the positive line of the battery. So when this key is removed, all power going to the fuse box turns off that back on again and you can see that the lights up there turn off. This means that I can work on the system and know for sure that everything's off and I won't blow a fuse or anything like that. 
there's a whole host of wires which come up this side here and go off to the fan and lights like I've shown before. But over here I've just wired in this switch here. And this switch will be hooked up to these LED lights. These go under the cabinets, uh, both in the kitchen and by the desk area. And I've just not hooked them up yet because they're a little bit finicky. You've got to cut them to the exact size. So I've just roughed in the wiring here and I'll be able to add it to um, add this on when the cabinets are actually in place and I can make exact measurements. The next order of business is removing this cup, which is actually covering up an old hole for the chimney. This is such a bizarre fix and it really, really needs to be remedied. That is so much better. Oh, that was bugging me for so long. Of course, I'm just kidding. I've replaced it with a roof vent. And this is no more. I've marked out in pencil where I need to cut the opening for the roof. I'm most of the way through, and you just sort of have to round the corners and come back in and cut them out later. But I'm going to need to be a little bit finicky getting around this side. I tried going that way, but it didn't work. Okay, so it's just hanging by this little bit, and it's, it probably just needs to be, yeah, like that. There we go. See right down in there. I squared out the corners and made sure that the fan fits into the hole. And I've also cleaned out the edges. Now I can put down some putty tape before putting in the vent itself. This is how much tape I've, I've got going on here. It's just one layer of putty tape. I was hoping to do two, but there isn't enough leftovers to do that. Now I'm a little bit concerned about this bit here where there is a rivet underneath there and it actually kind of pops up. And then also here, this bit has sort of, there's a little bit of a pop up there where it's come unglued, but my roof is flat. So hopefully this is enough. I've inserted the vent into the hole right on top of the putty tape. Now it's time to screw it in place. Here it is from the underside. So it's all installed, we got all the screws sticking through, but it's not really that much of a problem. And then this raises and lowers the lid like that. And now all I need to do is hook it up. So I'm just pinching these together for a quick test. We have motion! So I've just soldered up this switch here, and this is a double pull, double throw toggle. So basically when I flick this switch, the polarity of these two wires changes, and that'll allow me to reverse my Fantastic Fan. Now you can buy Fantastic Fans at reverse, but they're a lot more expensive than the basic model, and this is a $5 switch and some solder. I just drilled a hole in my new really expensive fan. So now that it's light out again, I thought I'd show you this fan in action now. So to turn it on, you actually need to open up the vent a little bit. And then you can flick this switch here to select the speed. So watch which way it goes when I turn it on. So that, sometimes it can be kind of hard to see fans on camera, but that actually took off clockwise from our perspective. So when it slows down, yeah, on the camera, it's going to look kind of strange, but it's actually spinning around like this. All right, so let's flick the switch. And yeah, again, the problem with the frame rate on the camera, but it is actually spinning this way. So that works. The solar panel from RenNG just arrived and I'm opening up the box. It looks like it's got almost everything I need except that the cable entry housing, which I had to order separately, uh, isn't coming till Friday. Connecting these Z brackets is actually really simple. There's just these little holes here and the flanges go down the side and then you stick a bolt through it. So I'm up on the roof of my van, and I'm about to install this 100 watt monocrystalline solar panel from Renogy. Now I've just got it covered up here, but you can see 
that it is in fact a monocrystalline panel and I just need to find the exact right places to put the screws in. There's eight screws total which screw this down to the roof of the step van and it's going to take a little bit of uh, finicky moving around to find the perfect spot to drill those in but I'm sure we'll find it. So I've moved the solar panel. I've decided to place it in the middle horizontally like this. This way all eight screws can actually get a purchase on a structural beam where before they couldn't and it will be much easier to clean from the hatch in this position. I've just ground away some of this paint and grime that's accumulated on the roof of the van so that I am screwing directly into the metal. This will mean when I do get around to siliconing, which I probably can't do in this weather, that I will have a clean surface to do so on. I've also just picked this one screw and put that in as a pivot point so that I can get the rest of the panel plumb. These are two screws from the solar panel and these have a good connection to this bit of beam right here. Now on the other side over here, the screws actually kind of went in between these two bits and so they're actually just in a little thin bit of aluminum like this. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that because they don't line up, but that's what it looks like from this side. So I forgot to take these two cables out um, before I screwed it down. I need to access these and I was about to trap them down there. I've had to wait the better part of a week for this cable entry housing to arrive because I had to order it from the United States instead of from Canada and pay import and duty and all that stuff. But it's well worth it because it will protect the cables going into the RV and also make sure that that's a waterproof seal. So I know that this looks really messy, but it's actually quite organized. Uh, this is the solar charge controller, and it's just the basic bottom tier one that comes with the kit. It's called the Wanderer. And I, it's not mounted right now because it's going to be mounted on the side of the bed up here. So I've just left it kind of <laughs> loose, and that kind of gives it a bit of a, a messy look here. But this is the positive line going into it from the battery. And I've just installed a 30 amp fuse here. And this is, um, it's a heavy duty waterproof fuse. That's not really necessary <laughs> because all of these fuses are not waterproof, uh, but it's what they had at the shop when I bought it. It's the same one that I have on the outside running in from the jumper cables uh, that come from the alternator there. So this is all connected. Uh, the PV light is flashing, but I do have the, uh, the solar panel actually um, covered up at the moment while I was doing all the electrical work. So let's pop up there and take that off. So it is snowing, not the best time to test it. Certainly the sky isn't very sunny, but I'm just going to take this bit of cardboard off. And give this a bit of a wipe down. I'm certainly worried about how this is going to set, especially since it started snowing and I'm, it looks like, yeah, it, the whole thing shifted over. Hopefully it's not too bad of an issue there. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the electrical system as it stands right now. We start on the roof with a 100 watt solar panel from Renogy, and that goes through the cable entry housing here. The PV cable comes down and into this charge controller here. And right now these two flashing lights indicate that the battery is being float charged, which basically means that we're at 100%. The positive leg of that goes into this 30 amp waterproof inline fuse, and then those lines run to the battery. These two orange cables come up from a battery isolator that runs off of the alternator. So when the, the van is in motion, then this battery will also be charged, regardless of the solar array. Then this white wire here goes into a battery kill switch. This is a key which can be removed, which turns off all power running through the fuse box. Like that, and it comes right out. So when this is out, I know that there is no draw besides, I suppose, the charge controller on the battery. Then this goes into a positive fuse box. Each of these lines runs off to an appliance, and then each of the, those lines go back into this negative bus which then is, goes back to the negative on the battery, which follows this cable here and is ground, grounded right there to the chassis of the vehicle.
So anything I want to add, I basically run the positive into this panel and the negative into here and select an appropriate fuse. I've hooked up this battery capacity meter and I'm not quite sure where this is going to be in the van, but basically this will let me know um, if I need to stop using the battery and sort of give me an idea of how that's all um, functioning. So right now the battery is at 100% which completely aligns with what we're reading from the charge controller. If I hit this button here, I can see that the actual voltage is 14.2 volts. Hit that again, and, then, and the display will just turn off. There are two appliances which haven't been wired in yet. Uh, that's an inverter and a water pump. Uh, the water pump I can always add later. I actually have it, but I've been running tests with it on another battery indoors to make sure that it works the way I want it to, and I don't need to run the wires through any walls or anything like that. And the inverter, I've actually bought several inverters. Uh, two at this point, uh, they were just cheap uh, modified uh, sine wave inverters, and they did not charge my laptop. They were having huge um, issues, and I just gave up, and I've ordered a pure sine wave inverter. So when that gets here, I'll probably make a video. But that's f uh, the electrical system as it stands right now. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much uh, for watching this uh, slightly longer video. And I will see you in the next one.